Today, let us share the Word of God with a sermon titled, Shine the Glory of Jerusalem to the Whole World. Everyone, won't we meet God when we go to heaven? The God we will meet in heaven is not only God the Father, but definitely God the Mother as well. Won't we also meet Elijah, Elisha, Melchizedek, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, Isaac, and all the forefathers of faith? However, our evil enemy, the devil, spreads false teachings to the whole world, saying, There is only God the Father in heaven. As for this situation, it is prophesied in Isaiah chapter 60. Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. It is for this reason that all the children of Zion must rise and shine the light of Jerusalem in this age, shining it brightly, as if setting it up on a roof rather than hiding it under the floor. As for the devil, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. According to this prophecy, evil opposers will exist until the end of the world. These opposers will speak against the truth of God the Mother with evil words and try to hinder Mother's mission and work. However, the rest of the woman's offspring in Revelation chapter 12 must become the watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem until she receives praise and glory on the earth, just as prophesied in Isaiah chapter 62. Nowadays, as we preach the truth of God the Mother and spread her glory to the whole world, many people try to deny the teachings regarding God the Mother. Nonetheless, the Bible definitely teaches that we need to believe in the existence of God the Mother and that she came to earth to save us. In the book of Genesis, the story of Adam and Eve teaches us that Eve would become the mother of all the living. In addition, the book of Revelation chapter 19 teaches us that the bride of the Lamb surely exists. Doesn't Revelation also prophesy that all mankind can receive the water of life to the same bride, the wife of the Lamb? However, Satan prevents people from understanding this truth. He is covering the truth about God the Mother so the people cannot see it correctly. Today, through the Bible, let us confirm the answer to the question, will we see both God the Father and God the Mother when we go to heaven? Once you find the answer to this question, it is a simple matter to completely distinguish between all the false churches and the true church. Not only that, but we can also find the answer to the question, are we in the true church that leads us to heaven? Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and of the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God created mankind and all things on earth and in the entire universe. When God created man, God said, Let us make man, that is, let us create man, in our image, in our likeness.
Since God said, let us, how is it possible for God to be singular? Here, God said, let us make man. Since they said, let us, aren't they the very gods who created all mankind, gave them the breath of life, and allowed them to live on earth as living beings? God also said, let us make man in our image. Then let us find out how many images mankind has. In verse 27 it says, So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. God, who is referred to as us, created mankind in the image of God. And as a result, male and female appeared. Isn't it clear that there exists a male image of God and a female image of God? All mankind has commonly referred to the male image of God as God the Father. But as for the female image of God, no one seeks or acknowledges her. Then, does it mean that the female image of God does not exist? She surely exists. Since we call the male image of God Father, what should we call the female image of God who gave breath and life to all mankind? We should call her God the Mother. God the Father and God the Mother had existed in heaven even before mankind existed on earth. The Bible says that the gods who had existed in heaven said, Let us make man in our own image, and then male and female were created on earth. Therefore, sooner or later, we must return to heaven, where God the Father and God the Mother dwell. Who teaches that there is no God the Mother in heaven? Whose teaching is that? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God clearly said to Satan, And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. In other words, Satan will always try to erase all of mothers, the woman's efforts, and even her existence. One of Satan's biggest hindrances on earth is to prevent all people from realizing the great love and sacrifice of Heavenly Mother. He goes to great lengths to deny her existence, so the people will not be able to go back to heaven where Mother is. Satan prevents people from obeying God's laws, decrees, and regulations so that they cannot recognize the existence of Heavenly Mother. In doing so, he makes people stand against her so that they will not believe in her. That's why God said through the prophecy of Isaiah 62, Make Jerusalem the praise and glory of the earth. Doesn't it mean that we should make the existence of Heavenly Mother known to the whole world and to let them follow her teachings? When this happens, the world of darkness will turn into the world of bright light and people will be able to tell good from evil. Finally, Heavenly Children, who do not follow wickedness but remain in righteousness, will be born. God will firmly establish Jerusalem so that all nations on earth can recognize her. He will gather all of God's children to Zion, where the last truth is, and grant them a mind to long for Jerusalem so that they can share happiness and joy with her in Zion. That is why it is written in Revelation 22 verse 17, that in the last days, not only God the Father, but also God the Mother will appear and say, Come, whoever is thirsty, let him come. They are God the Father and God the Mother. In order to make this known to all mankind, God created the earth as a copy and shadow of what is in heaven, which is the reality. The Bible keeps emphasizing this, but people fail to realize it. When Satan sets out to deceive people with various deceitful words and presents false evidence, 
There are people who waver because of the falsehood and turn away from the salvation that was not easily obtained. It is so heartbreaking. Is there anything you can really hope for on earth? So far, due to the coronavirus alone, over 1.1 million people have died. We should think about this carefully. Can the kingdom of heaven where there is no mother truly be the kingdom of heaven? The Bible says that we must not add to nor subtract from the word of God. Therefore, we must go to the kingdom of heaven where there is mother as well as father. Satan keeps presenting false testimony to make people deny Heavenly Mother and forget about the Kingdom of Heaven. We must never add to nor subtract from the teachings that God gave us in the Bible. Even before men's flesh and bones were created, Father and Mother said in the spiritual world, let us make man. Despite this absolute word of God, does it make sense that God the Mother does not exist? Today, there are countless religions on the earth. However, truth does not exist where there is no belief or faith in the existence of God the Mother. We can simply say that the kingdom of heaven will not be given to them. We can confirm this matter through the teachings of Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, what happens to them? They do not see. Though hearing, what else happens to them? They do not hear or understand. Let's continue with verse 14. And then is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You'll be ever hearing but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Verse 17. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. If Apostle John were here today and saw the reality of the heavenly Jerusalem, how joyful he would be. When David brought the Ark of God into the city of David, he expressed his great joy by dancing before God like a little child. Wouldn't John do the same? Nowadays, many people read the Bible, yet they cannot see with their eyes that God the Mother absolutely exists. But what about us? Can't we see? Who has allowed us to see her? Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. Just for the fact that we have received the blessing of coming to Heavenly Mother, how thankful we are. When we go to heaven, we will finally realize that we have received these great and amazing blessings. Let us endure a little more until that time comes. For this, we need perseverance. As the coronavirus pandemic has continued for about 10 months now, people who don't believe in God say, I feel hopeless. My life isn't fun anymore. Some say, maybe the end, the judgment day, which so many churches talk about, is coming indeed. People make various comments such as these. These are the things that people living in the world are saying. However, what about us? Isn't our future a truly splendid world that is worthy of having hope for? We cannot help but give thanks once again 
to Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother for giving us this faith. God taught us many times that we do indeed have God the Mother through many examples on this earth. However, the world does not realize it. They fail to pay attention to and understand this teaching. Let us see what kind of hint God gives us by taking a look at Revelation chapter 4. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 10 it is written, The twenty-four elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for You created all things. And by whose will? By Your will they were created. Based on the statement, by Your will they were created, Whose will was it to create males in the image of father and females in the image of mother? It was God's will. Therefore, whenever we see a man, we should think, we have God the Father in heaven. And when we see a woman, whom should we think of? We should think, we have God the Mother in heaven too. God created mankind as male and female so that we can easily recognize God's will in creation and never forget about this important fact. God created all different kinds of animals. Let us think about the birds in the sky. Are there only daddy birds? No, there are also mommy birds. What about fish in the sea? God made daddy fish and mommy fish as well. Why did God create things this way? The beautiful deer running in the field also have a daddy deer and a mommy deer. Why did God create them like that? A zebra also has his daddy zebra and mommy zebra. Why did God create them that way? The Bible says all things were created by God's will. Not only the world of animals, let us also look at the world of plants. Flowers have their daddy flowers and mommy flowers too. Trees have their daddy trees and mommy trees. Humans too are given life through their mothers. It is truly profound. Without mothers, is it possible to say that the next generation will exist? Please think about the teaching that all things were created by God's will. Why did God create all things like that? Every day, God is teaching all mankind, you have God the Mother. The flowers tell us, you have God the Mother. The rabbits tell us, you have God the Mother. The deer tell us, you have God the Mother. Even the geese in the sky tell us, you have God the Mother. Through everything that we see, the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals running in the field, God lets us know that we have God the Mother. God created this earth according to His will and allowed all people to have fathers and mothers to reveal His will. Contained in God's will is the system through which all living creatures receive life from their mothers. At Okchung Goenkum Training Institute, there are many ginkgo trees on both sides of the road, all the way up from the entrance to the gate. They must have turned beautifully yellow by now. However, interestingly, only a few of them bear fruit. This is because many of them are daddy trees, but only a few of them are mommy trees. And it is only those mommy trees that bear fruit. It is truly amazing. This is how God made them. If you could ask a ginkgo tree who gave you life, it would say, my mommy did. If you were to ask a goose who gave you life, it would say, my mommy did. God created nature to be our textbook, teaching us about the spiritual world so that we can see it with our eyes. Why did God do such a thing? Let us read Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. 
It is written that God's invisible power and divine nature have been clearly shown through what has been made, so the people will not have any excuse. When we look at what has been made, we can feel God's divine nature and also see the existence of the male and female images of God. Therefore, at the last day, I didn't know about God the Mother, so I couldn't believe, will not be an acceptable excuse. Are not all things in nature testifying to the existence of God the Mother through their own existence? After seeing all this evidence, we should be able to clearly discern who teaches there is no God the Mother. The Bible mentions this matter numerous times and gives us many realizations. God made a shadow of what is in heaven through the things on earth. If everything on earth is a shadow, then what are the things in heaven? Let us take a look at Hebrews chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 5. It says, They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. Then doesn't it mean that what is in heaven is the reality? This means that what is on earth is merely a copy and shadow reflecting what is in heaven. Don't you agree? Can things that do not exist in heaven exist on earth? No. Then just as there is a Father in heaven, who is the reality? There must be fathers that exist on earth as his shadow. Likewise, if we can see mothers on earth who are a shadow, then who must exist in heaven? There must be God the Mother, the reality. This is why mothers exist on earth to serve as shadows of their reality. The same is true for brothers and sisters. Just as there are brothers and sisters in a family on earth, there are surely brothers and sisters in heaven, the spiritual world. Let us now confirm that what is on earth is indeed a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, it is written, Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our, who is He? Our Father in heaven. Since we have our Father in heaven, there are people on earth who play the role of a father. Can there be a copy without the reality? It is impossible. God certainly let us know that we have God the Father in the spiritual world through Matthew chapter 6. Since the term father is only used in a family on earth, we should study about the family by comparing what is in heaven to what is on earth. Without a doubt, the word father implies that a man has a child. Let us take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Here God told us, Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. Verse 18, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says, who spoke these words? The Lord Almighty. God Himself spoke these words. Think carefully about the relationship between the heavenly family and the earthly family, the reality and the shadow. Just as we have our human fathers, we also have our spiritual father. And just as there are spiritual children, there are human children as well. What about human mothers? Do they exist or not? They surely exist. Did we not see in Genesis chapter 1, God created man saying, let us make man in our image, and male and female being created? If Heavenly Mother did not exist, then not a single woman would have ever have existed. Our Heavenly Mother gave birth to our souls in heaven, and she has devoted herself to us ever since we were angels in the spiritual world until this very day. The reason God has allowed all mothers on earth 
to have special love toward their children is help us understand the love of our Heavenly Mother. Shouldn't we realize God's providence through this? Galatians chapter 4 verse 26 says, But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. As we have our human mothers, don't we also have our spiritual mother? In Galatians chapter 4 verse 26, we see the expression, the Jerusalem that is above. And in Revelation chapter 21, John saw a vision where an angel said, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Then what did the angel show him? The holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. We can realize how much God has tried to give this truth to the chosen children of heaven as a special gift of grace only for them. What if the angel had directly shown him the reality of the bride after saying, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb? So many false mothers would have appeared today, creating such confusion that it would be impossible for us to find the truth. The angel promised, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb, and showed him Jerusalem. Then, in the book of Galatians, Jerusalem is referred to as our mother. We certainly have our eternal Heavenly Mother. Today, we can easily distinguish between the true church and the false churches according to whether or not they have Heavenly Mother. The church without Heavenly Mother is not the true church. There is no life in that church. The Bible says that the place where both God the Father and God the Mother dwell is the kingdom of heaven. So God said, Now you can reveal the existence of Jerusalem. Father prepared everything for us to reveal Mother's existence after His ascension. Now we can go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth saying, Believe in God the Mother. Through the prophets in the Bible, God told us to go and preach the glory of God the Mother to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There are so many people around us who do not yet fully know God. Let us teach them correctly about God the Father and God the Mother and preach the glory of Jerusalem without rest until she is praised and glorified by all people throughout the world. Let us start this Holy Spirit movement from this autumn. Father and Mother will surely open the doors for all people to come. Some of us may worry, thinking, a deep sea, like the Red Sea, is now standing in front of us. How can we pass through the sea and cross to the other side? We don't even have a single boat or tool. However, didn't God divide the Red Sea so that the Israelites could easily pass through the sea by a method beyond human imagination? God does everything. God can even do the amazing work of dividing the heavens just as He divided the Red Sea. Let us look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride, Father and Mother, say, Come, they call all their beloved children around the world to come. And let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Unless we come to Father and Mother, we can never receive this water of life. Jesus gives the answer for this water of life in John 4, verse 14. Whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The water I give you will become in you, the water welling up to eternal life. What will the Spirit and the Bride ultimately give us? Eternal life. Where? According to Psalms chapter 133, where is eternal life bestowed? In Zion. The Bible teaches, return to Zion, where father and mother dwell, and drink the water of eternal life there to your heart's content. God says, whoever is thirsty, let him come. 
and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Brothers and sisters, today we are studying God's Word exactly as recorded in the Bible. Father and Mother are now calling all people around the world to come back to Zion quickly. God the Father and God the Mother have sent us to save your family today. So please, come into the arms of Father and Mother. We have an invitation for you. Please come back into God's arms. This is how we should go preach to all people. While there is still a chance, let us teach them the way to come back into the arms of God. I earnestly ask all of you, our heavenly members in Zion, to lead many souls to repentance, so that you can shine like the stars in heaven forever and ever. With this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.